In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a really cool call to action uh, button, headline, and text for any offer you might be creating. Hi, my name is Lori Ballin. I'm a six-figure affiliate real estate business owner, and I've built multiple businesses on the backbone of blogging, content marketing, if you will. My specialty is search engine optimization. Now, call to actions are very important because what we want to do is we want to be driving our visitors to our website to a specific we want them to take a specific action, okay? It might be we want them to register to download a freebie. Maybe we want them to click on an affiliate link. Maybe we want to sell them a product. Maybe I want to um, generate, make an offer for a home value evaluation for my real estate website, let's just say. Whatever it is, we need to know how, what the goal is of that piece of content, okay? Now, this is my blog, lauriballon.com. When I am first creating a blog post, I will often do the minimum just to see where it's gonna go on the search engines before I go back and put too much into it. Once I see that it's starting to rank, I will go in and create a call to action. So let's take a look over here. I'm gonna look, I'm gonna pull up my analytics for today. So let's pull up Clicky and let's see where our visitors are today. Okay. So let's just go with this one right here. How to make a, a how to make a link clickable. Okay. By the way, the tools that I talk about in my tutorial videos, you can find at lauristools.com and I often will uh, put a link in the description of the video if I can remember, depending on which tool that I show you. I do have affiliate relationships with some of these tools, which means I profit if you wind up making a purchase through that link. There's no extra cost to you. Okay, so Clicky is an analytics tool that shows you basically your visitors. There's even a real-time option on here where you can actually spy on the visitor, not directly see them, but what they're doing on the website, how long they spent, the actions they took, the blog that they're on, where they came from. As you can see here, as I said earlier, my primary source of traffic is Google, search engine rankings, organic rankings, unpaid. So Google, 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 Pinterest being Google, Google, Google. All right, that's what we're doing. So this is what I do every day, creating my content all throughout the day. I'm checking clicky. What are people, where are people at? And then I will pick a random page sometimes and I'll run a page speed check and I'll take a look at how it looks on mobile and, and do I have a good clear call to action on there? Do I need to put some ads on there? What, how am I monetizing or what is my goal? Okay, so this one here, how to make a, a, a link clickable. Let's just go ahead and open that one. Okay, now I am using WordPress and what we're going to do today is we're going to look at how to... Um, create a call to action on WordPress using the WordPress Gutenberg blocks, okay? So WordPress Gutenberg is a page builder in itself. It's nowhere near as advanced as Elementor or Beaver Builder or any of those yet, but it also doesn't slow down your website when you're using uh, regular blocks. So I wanna sh show you this so that you can take a look at, at what I'm talking about, okay? Now, I haven't gotten fancy with my featured blog photo on this one yet. I just, long story, I just imported one blog to another blog and I'm still going back through. So let me click the edit post on this one and we'll just go ahead and work with this one here, okay? Today I happen to have the um, sidebars off. I'm playing around with the wide theme versus the sidebars, okay? Um, so what I would do here is I would go ahead and first put in the featured blog photo. So depending on your theme, that featured blog photo might automatically become your header image, um, or it might not, just depends on how you have your, your settings. So how to make a link clickable. So I would do something like this. I would go over to Canva, and then I would pick whatever my last template was. Let's just go with that one. I'm gonna come up here to templates and I'm gonna say something like um, link or I'm gonna pick whatever image. I'm just gonna grab something really quick so you guys get the idea of it. So you can see how fast this moves. I'm gonna to go to styles, okay, something like this. And then up here, I would do how to make a link clickable. I've got another video that shows you how to do that thing I just did with the colors where I immediately assigned all my brand colors to it. 
And then here I'm going to add, make it my font, shrink that down, make that a little bit bigger. Okay. And then right here, I would go to element and I'm going to choose, and this is Canva. I'll put a link below. I'm going to choose something like, um, I'll just put somebody on a computer right now, make it real simple. We'll just go with that one. How to make a link clickable. Good enough. Download JPEG download. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to show you how nice the call to action looks underneath an image, how to make a link clickable. Okay. So now we're just going to choose, go here and I'm going to choose image. I'm going to browse for the image, how to make a link clickable. Okay. Um, and in this particular case, I'm going to make that just full size. I would do, go ahead and do my, um, optimize the image, put it in this description over here, but we're, we'll worry about that later. Okay. Now let's go ahead and make our call to action. Okay. Now what I like in a call to action is a heading, a little description and a button. Okay. So it kind of looks like this. Let's just say, um, we want to look up a, um, let's just look up any kind of software. We'll do AI writing assistant. Okay. So kind of like, uh, Google has a heading description, and then there's more down here. Well, oftentimes when you click on the actual product, you see what I'm talking about. Heading description button. So that's the kind of call to action I'm talking about. We're going to kind of stay in the line with that. Now you can get all kinds of fancy. There's even now blocks that we can import from other developers, but I'm going to keep this really simple and just use the, the Gutenberg one uh, without importing anything fancy. So we can just keep it very, very simple. Okay. So we're going to go back over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this little plus sign to add a block. Okay. Now, if you don't have blocks, and you have WordPress, you might need to go into your settings, reading, and then there'll be a little button there that says something about use blocks, turn on blocks or use blocks. Okay. So you might not have your block editor activated. If you need a new WordPress blog or you don't have a WordPress blog, talk to my brothers, Jeff and Paul at balanbrands.com. They actually build these websites. That'll make it nice and simple for you. Okay. So right here, I'm just going to click that little plus and I'm going to put a heading. So this is going to be our paragraph heading. Okay. Now the call to action that I want to make today, this whole blog is all about how to make a link clickable on a blog. Okay. So my call to action, I want to offer them some sort of SEO software or linked software or YouTube tool, or it could be my course. Okay. Um, I think we will do, uh, we'll do, uh, one related to links and we'll do link whisper. Okay. So, um, link whisper, what I would do is I would go over here and open the tool itself. Okay. So what's link whispers call to action. So here's their call to action, building smart turn of links just got easier. And then here's their description. And then here's the button. Okay. Now I can use their call to action or I can create something similar to that. Okay. So building, building smart internal links just got easier. Okay. So I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to put, um, um, build links faster and smarter, something like that. Okay. Now the next, I'm just going to hit the enter key and space right down. And now I get a text field. Okay. So now we're going to put a little description. So see up here, they have a revolutionary WordPress plugin to speed up the process of internal linking and help you rank better on Google. Now, let me show you a tool that I use. I use a tool called uh, Jasper. It used to be called Jarvis and now it's called Jasper. I guess they couldn't use that name anymore. Something about Disney. And, um, so this is what I do. I pay for this tool. You don't have to, but whenever I teach, I always show you the tools I actually use in my everyday 
life, okay? I use a couple of AI, many AI tools. I use Grammarly, I use Phrase, I use Jarvis but for, or Jasper, but for this particular thing, we're gonna use Jasper. So what we're looking for is a template that's called um, product description, okay? And the reason I do this is because Jasper writes better than product, product descriptions than I do, so I like to have the help, okay? So we're gonna do uh, Link Whisperer. So what I do is I just take uh, what Link Whisper has, I tell, I wanna tell the product name is Link Whisper. Now tell us about the product. So they're not gonna use this text directly. You're not copying and stealing it, plagiarizing or anything like that. We're just gonna use this to tell the AI tool what Link Whisper is about, okay? So I wanna grab enough information that Jasper can intelligently tell me what this product is all about. Okay, something like that. Then you can give it a tone of voice if you want to. You can put in uh, a, a famous actor, you could put in funny, smart, intelligent, I don't know. You can also leave it blank, okay? I'm still playing with the tone of voice to see what it does, but a lot of people are really into the tone of voice. So I'm gonna click generate AI content. And on the right hand, oh, underneath here, yeah, on the right hand side, we're gonna get, um, product description, speed up the process of internal linking with Link Whisper, a WordPress plugin that makes intelligent suggestions. Boost your SEO ranking with this powerful tool that takes the hard work out of internal linking. Let Link Whisper help you populate your website. Okay, so I'm gonna take one of these. A revolutionary WordPress plugin to speed up the process of internal linking and help you rank better on Google. I like that one, except that's the one they already, so in this particular case, they're taking that exact content. We don't want that. Um, increase your website's SEO ranking. Okay, that's that's the AI tool writing that one. With Link Whisper, an AI-powered internal linking plugin for WordPress. All right, stop wasting time on manual internal linking. Let Link Whisper do the work. Any of these are great. So I'm gonna just copy this second one, and then I'm gonna go back over to my call to action. I'm gonna paste it right there, okay? Um, we could put in another line. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab both of those lines. I like this one too. Stop wasting your time. Let's take that one too. Okay, so now th that's original content that we wrote, okay? Now we need a button. So now I'm gonna click that little plus sign and I'm just gonna find the button. So what I'm doing here is I'm just typing in a few letters of the type of call to action that I want. So the first one, we put in an H for heading and it comes up. You can also just browse and scroll down to find what you want. So we did um, the heading and then we just did, we spaced down and it gave us a text field so we didn't even have to find anything. And now I just typed in BU and you start to get, okay, and we're gonna get to buttons. So just click buttons. Now we're gonna enter whatever text we want here, okay? It could be as simple as get started, take a free trial. So what is Link Whisper's call to action? Get Link Whisper now. Um, let me see, do they have a free trial? No. Okay, so I'm gonna put, I'm gonna do get started with Link Whisper now. Okay, something like that. And then you can choose to make this button full, the full width by doing 100%. Or you could make it 75%, 50%, 25%. You can center it if you want it to be centered. Okay. And you can make it round or square. I think by default, my buttons are, are set to round or that it's really more oval. But you can play with all these different styling here. So I'm gonna do a full width on mine and let's put no alignment there we go and now we'll go full width okay now we need to put a, a clickable link here 
So that's a button. Somebody's going to click it. You need to have a link for them to go to whatever it is, wherever you want them to go. In this particular case, this I am making a call to action for an affiliate link. So I have an affiliate relationship with Link Whisper, which means when somebody purchases a product using my link, I make money on that sale. So oftentimes on my blogs, you will see that the button takes you to some sort of a software that I did not develop. And that's how affiliate marketing works. So I do a lot of these. So let's get started with Link Whisper now. So the next thing I do is I go get my Link Whisper um, link. And how I do that is I have a tool called Thirsty Affiliates. It is a plugin for WordPress. There's a free and a paid version. Um, and I have the paid version because the paid version also does automatic linking. So for example, I could say every time I say the word Jarvis anywhere on my blog, automatically add the affiliate link. Okay. And I can add multiple keywords. It does that. It also gives me a short bitly link that I can use like on YouTube. So I pay for the, um, for the upgrade. So I would go over here and I would type in link whisper because that's the link I need right now. There it is. I'm going to grab the bitly link. And then I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to paste it here. The re oops, I didn't grab it. Try that again. The reason I grabbed the bit.ly link instead of the original affiliate link is because with these bit.ly links with thirsty affiliates, if that affiliate were to ever, uh, let's just say, for example, I have an affiliate relationship with, with, um, an affiliate, brand that is part of the share a sale affiliate network. For those of you that know affiliate marketing, you know what I'm talking about a little bit. So they change affiliate networks often, or they'll be part of multiple affiliate networks and they'll have different offers. So for example, one of the courses I promote is $99 one time commission if I sell it, but that same course over at another network offers me a recurring commission off of every month's subscription, which is really what I want. So once I find that out, I go, okay, that I need to leave this program and go to that program instead. Well, then I need to change the affiliate link. Well, with Thirsty Affiliates, I can just change it one time. And then anywhere I ever use that bit.ly link, it'll update all of them on YouTube, on social media, anywhere without going and finding each one of those links. So that's huge for me. Big, big. Okay. So now that we've got our link, get started now. And we're going to, um, oh, I already pasted it. Let me do that again. Click the link. Click on this little link icon, paste the link, and then I'm going to click to have that open in a new tab. And if you're, depending what theme and plugins you're using, you might have the ability to mark that as a sponsored post. That's probably a good idea. Google likes to see if posts are being sponsored. Okay. Um, but and then you can mark it no follow if you're doing SEO and you want to make sure that no link equity flows from that page to another page, but that's a whole nother conversation. So the buttons naturally in Gutenberg don't offer that, but if you have the right plugin, that can be an addition. Um, you can do that with a plugin or you can do it manually if you know how to do that. Okay. Now there's another step here. So let me go to preview and show you this, what this was looking like right now. We're almost done. Okay, so here's the image. Normally that would be above the table of contents because I normally just have it set as a featured. It looks prettier normally, basically is what I'm saying. Okay, then underneath this, here we have the title, the intro, and the button. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to now link these all together in one container so it's actually one piece, okay? So what we do is we take this, we highlight and we go all the way down. And now up here, we're going to click these three dots and we're going to say group, or we can, I think that's the grouping icon too, but we can go to group. Now it's one piece. Okay. One nice, clean call to action. Now here's the gold. If you stayed this long in this video, this is where it gets really juicy. Now I can save that block, this call to action. It's into a reusable library where, where now I can just pull in that call to action on any page I want in the future without rebuilding that call to action. So we go up here, we're going to click the three dots and we're going to add two reusable blocks. 
and I'm gonna call this one link whisper call to action. So now anytime I wanna use that call to action, I can just go in there and grab it, okay? Now, depending on your, I'm not, I just put a new theme, I'm playing with all kinds of stuff. I'm not as crazy about the spacing on this particular um, editor. But if, if you want to, you can add a spacer after that button if you're not getting enough white space in between. So that's the beauty of these content blocks. So I'll show you that again. All I, all I did is I clicked the plus to add a block and then I started typing an SP for spacer and I put the spacer in there and that will give a little more um, room there. So then I would click update and then we're gonna click view post. Okay, there's your image, there's your call to action. I don't know why that shot over there. That needs just aligned a little bit more to the left. But anyway, you can play around with these all you want because what you can do now is if we don't like how that looks, we can edit the post and anywhere now you see that call to action, you can actually um, click to, you can edit anything in here and then you, you can resave that call to action, okay? So play around with your heading, you can play around with your um, centering. So maybe we'll just sit, you could center the whole thing if you wanted to. That might look a little bit better. And again, it all is up to the theme that you're using. It makes such a difference on how this all looks, okay? So then when you update this automatically, that call to action block will now update and it will update on all of your pages that it's on. So it's one change and it updates every everywhere. That's absolutely huge. That looks better. So again, if you're using, here's what it's going to look like on mobile. So see that? So it's all centered. If you don't want it centered, you can change all that. I was just playing around with it on the fly as we're playing around. So that's it. That's amazing, right? That's how you add a call to action block. I'm Lori Ballon. Thanks so much for watching the video today.